I've written lengthier remarks that develop these subjects a little bit more precisely, and these are going to be published by the Kirby Cent Center on their site and a monograph produced. And in those, I have a number of recommendations concerning uh, the procedures of the Senate Judiciary Committee in holding its confirmations. But most of all, what I want to do by uh, working with Hillsdale College and the Kirby Center is communicate to, to, to groups of people who may not be part of the inside, uh, the, the inner constitutional sanctum, what is at stake right now. So hopefully there will be more interest um, communicated to their elected officials and eventually the elected officials, particularly those in the United States Senate who participate in this process, might take an interest in trying to focus the confirmation hearings on these matters. I mean, there have been many very disappointing confirmation hearings in the past. Uh, I thought the one with regard to Justice Sotomayor was actually a good step in the right direction, but I think we continue to have to encourage members of the uh, Senate to uh, devote even more focus to constitutional issues. I guess most of all what I'd like in the confirmation process would be an increasing focus not just on uh, Judge Smith or Judge Jones who's actually before the committee, but I wish these would be used increasingly as an opportunity to assess the health of the Constitution and to analyze the, 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 the great uh, constitutional debates of the time to try to um, inquire of, of, of judicial nominees what they think about these issues. Uh, I think there's a, a real misunderstanding on the part of, uh, of many senators as to what constitutes an appropriate kind of inquiry, and uh, many people have a lot of confusion about that. I think it's altogether appropriate to ask questions about how a judicial candidate proposes to resolve a constitutional dispute that is what they would look to, what the evidence that they believe would be appropriate to consider in that process. I don't believe it's proper to ask how would you decide a particular precise case in the future, but I do believe it's proper to ask them questions about larger contra constitutional controversies. What do you think about a colorblind constitution? This has been a matter of debate in the United States for the past 30 years. What do you think about a colorblind constitution? What do you think about the debate that Professor Coe defines between the nationalist and the transnationalist? I think these are proper, entirely proper debates. You know, the advice and consent process is the choke point of our constitutional process. Once a judge, a judicial nominee, gets beyond that choke point, he's on the bench for the rest of his life. And I think it's entirely proper for senators, and I'm talking about senators of both parties, inquiring of judicial nominees of both parties. It's entirely proper to inquire uh, just what kind of custodian a judicial nominee will become if he is blessed with this opportunity to define our Constitution for the rest of his or her life. And I don't think senators need to be apologetic about that. I think they need to understand this is one of the most important responsibilities that they carry out, especially those on the Senate Judiciary Committee.